So I want to do a quick video just showing you how you can use geometry nodes uh, in a non-destructive way and get them into Godot. So with the latest versions of Godot and Blender, there's like a really cool way to do this. Um, but first, let me just walk through what's going on in this scene. I have a few things here. I have a ground plane. So that's just uh, you know a simple plane mesh that I've got a very ugly texture put on. And then I have a bunch of grass, and they're all using this geometry nodes uh, shader. So it's a very, very, very simple geometry node setup. It has instance on points. Uh, it grabs it from the ground plane, and then it does this distribution thing. So I also expose the density as well as the seed so I can control some stuff. Um, but basically, if I come back to, I think I was in layout. If we come back to here, and if I turn off the geometry nodes, you can see it's just a single uh, mesh right at the dead center of the of the map, and it's just got a few planes on it. So pretty pretty well optimized. So I did this for a bunch of models that I grabbed. So we've got that grass, we've got this one, we've got some tree trunks, we've got some leaves, and we've got a second tr set of trees. All right. So this is going to be pretty slow. It's a pretty heavy scene. Um, so I'm going to switch just to the object mode. And what I want to show you is that there is a way to bring this into Godot and maintain all of your, um, maintain all the instances basically, which is pretty sweet. So I'm going to actually delete this GLTF node. So you can see there's nothing really in here, just a character controller, a camera, and we're going to look at some um, stats in a second. But what you want to do, so you have your scene set up in Blender that's doing a bunch of geometry nodes, cool stuff like that. If you go into export GLTF, uh, first of all, you know, find your asset folder in your Godot project, use the GLTF separate. Um, I'm going to call it this. I always include visible. But the setting you want to use is under scene graph and this experimental nodes instances setting. Uh, this actually works. I remember a couple of versions ago it did not work. A couple versions ago, this did not work, but it works now. So if we export this to GLTF, it's going to take a, a second here. We get the import on the Godot side, and I want to show you what happens. Now, there's good and bad about this. I'm going to try to talk through what's going to happen. Every single geometry node here gets instanced properly on the Godot side. So it's not duplicating meshes. You're going to see there's very, very few draw calls, which is very impressive, honestly. It's because of how the forward plus uh, batches draw calls. Um, but we're still going to have like 10,000 nodes to deal with. So it's not that there's no performance hit. It's just that there's, you know, there's pros and cons. So if we drag this in, uh, that's the wrong one. If I drag in the GLTF file, we actually get everything come in here. And just to show you what's under the hood, and this can get a little slow, so you need to be a bit careful with this. If you press uh, editable children, you'll notice there are actually 10,000 or so, 12,000 instances of those geometry nodes. Now, the cool thing is that if you look at your statistics, uh, we, you can see, if I zoom out here a little bit, there are, oh, there's a million primitives in this tiny, tiny little scene here. Um, lotting is enabled, so Godot will auto lot this for you. It is set up in the import settings. I, I checked it. Uh, generate lots is there. So Godot is going to do its best job to auto lot at distance. Um, objects 11,000. So these are the 11,000 nodes, right? A node is an object under the hood. We have a million triangles, but only 34 draw calls. So this is very, very impressive. And once again, it's all because of the forward plus. Now, what I'm going to do, I discovered uh, something that was tanking my FPS when I ran this test earlier is my actual video capture on screen. You, you can see my face on the, on the video. Uh, that's NVIDIA doing a background removal. If I disable that and we run the scene, I'm actually going to close it in the editor so that we kind of minimize what resources we're using. I have a feeling that it might be Blender, actually. So let's, uh, let's try closing Blender. Let's just close this, save and close. And yeah, there we go. So we're up to 95 frames per second. I imagine if I wasn't running OBS and streaming and recording, um, I'm only, I've only got a 3050 Ti on my laptop, so no, no crazy GPU. But this is a surprisingly good uh, workflow. Um, everything is non-destructive. 
I don't think that having this open is, is the problem. I think we can have this open. I don't think that is going to drag down the FPS too much. Maybe a little, yeah. Um, but it's completely non-destructive. If we change things in, in Blender, we can export it and we get all of those geometry nodes come over. Uh, but there's pros and cons. If it were me and if I were doing this on a production game, I wouldn't have this instance nodes. I would probably write my own parser that would convert all of these nodes into rendering server calls. Um, so we just remove the node, the, the burden, the burden of the nodes in the scene tree. Right. So, um, but yeah, I wanted to share this because I, I think it's cool. I think people have been looking for a way to use geometry nodes in Blender for a while. And I think this is totally, uh, totally usable um, for creating scenes like this. And there's definitely a decent amount of detail here. If you if you scatter in some rocks and some more uh, foliage and stuff on the ground, this is, you know, basically a, a full fully kitted out scene.